Before I Self Destruct is the fourth studio album by American rapper 50 Cent, released November 9, 2009 on Shady Records, Aftermath Entertainment and Interscope Records in the United States. It is his final solo release with Shady Records, Aftermath Entertainment and Interscope Records excluding a Greatest Hits album. A feature film, also titled Before I Self Destruct was also made, and is available within the album packaging. The Invitation Tour took place in promotion of the album and his then-upcoming studio album Black Magic, which has since been shelved. Background Initially, Before I Self Destruct was planned to be 50 Cent's 2007 album, for which he confirmed he had already completed 12 songs. However, he decided to release Curtis instead, and thus Before I Self Destruct's release date was originally pushed back to 2008. In a red carpet interview 50 Cent stated that while he was working on the album, he wrote, produced, and directed his first film saying that the release of the film would coincide with the release of the album. Though a track list appeared in early January 2009, 50 Cent later stated he reworked much of the album. Another track stated to be on the album, though not officially confirmed as a single, entitled Crime Wave was released in late October 2009. The album's release date was initially announced to be February 4, 2008, but later moved to March 2008, due to the release date of Curtis being pushed up to September 2007. However it was later revealed, in an interview with G-Unit members Tony Yeo and Lloyd Banks, that the album was scheduled to be released during the fourth quarter of 2008, with 50 Cent himself later stating that the album was due to be released December 9, 2008. MTV later reported that the album would instead be released in 2009, with February 3 being the date 50 Cent himself confirmed. Though it was later pushed back to March 2009, with March 24 being set as the day, until he later confirmed that Mentor and label mate Eminem's album, Relapse, was going to be released before his own. 50 Cent then told MTV that he would release the album in June, with the date being changed once again as he decided to retool parts of the album once Eminem's relapse was completed. However, the album was pushed back to a fall 2009 release, with September being the specific month. On Jimmy Kimmel Live, 50 Cent stated that the album will be out second week of September, I'll be back on the streets baby, with the date later stated to be specifically September 11th, which at the time, was the release date of Jay-Z's The Blueprint 3. However, these reports were later contradicted by MTV, when they stated that 50 Cent exclusively confirmed the release date as September 29, 2009. The album was later officially confirmed to have been pushed back again by 50 Cent, who claimed November 3, 2009 as the newly confirmed release date, but this was once again changed to November 17, 2009. However, in October 2009, the album was pushed back a week to make the release date November 24, 2009. Universal has pushed several albums forward to November 23, 2009, including Before I Self Destruct. 50 stated that because the album leaked and the good response it got, he will release the album a week earlier, on November 16. The album was released exclusively on the iTunes Store on November 9 at 12 a.m while the physical copy was released in stores on November 16. Since the album was released digitally a week ahead of the physical copy, Interscope Records requested that Billboard and Nielsen Soundscan uphold a rule instituted in 2008 where a label may ask Nielsen Soundscan to hold the digital sales count of an album for up to one week, and for Billboard to delay charting that album, when a leak results in a digital album beating its physical counterpart to brick and mortar stores. Music. Equals concept equals, 50 Cent told MTV that he named the album Before I Self Destruct because it could potentially happen. 50 Cent described the album as darker, and more aggressive than his previous album and stated, hands down, it will be the best record of that time period. Equals production and guests equals, when speaking of producers and guests for the album, 50 Cent has stated Rich Harrison will be producing for the album as well as Kanye West, though his track will not be featured. Other producers that have stated they will be working on the project include Shah Money XL and TY5, who posted his listening session on YouTube, Swise Beats, 
After not having any tracks make the final cut of Curtis, DJ Premier with a track entitled Shut Your Blood Clot Mouth, and Dewan Parker, who has stated he is featured on the single I Get It In. In contrast to Curtis, 50 Cent explained that fans should not expect to see guest appearances like you saw on Curtis. He also described Before I Self Destruct as an entirely different concept, which will set up the next batch of records in his career. After 50 Cent's collaboration with Atkin on I'll Still Kill, which appeared on Curtis, Atkin stated that 50 Cent and himself would be working on each other's upcoming albums due to the successful experience they developed while working on Curtis, and that, when working on songs, however a Euro unregistered trademark S album it feel right on, for a Euro unregistered trademark S where we gonna put it. In an interview, Tim Ballin stated that he has worked with 50 Cent, but he did not know which albums the collaborations would end up on. This song was released on May 18, 2010 for internet download and is titled You Should Be Dead. This song gained popularity and is a constant source of debate as to why it was not featured on the album. The Coalition website stated it truly is amazing how 50 Cent a Euro unregistered trademark S leftover tracks are better than most rapper a Euro unregistered trademark S singles. A perfect example of this is You Should Be Dead. A producer J. R. Rodham also spoke about working on the album, saying that 50 Cent is into soulful music, and he sat down and gave him numerous tracks and that on this album, 50 Cent was, trying to bring a very powerful new sound, and that is would be a remarkable project. Play NSKILLZ also confirmed working with 50 Cent for the BISD project, saying, Our rhythm on the drum pattern, we had to switch it up a little bit. 50 Cent said he wanted to go back to the boom bap hardcore gangster stuff. We tried to fit his style. I think 50 is gonna come back. He's a hitmaker. He's written a lot of hits for a lot of people. Shah told me 50's getting back in the get rich or die trying mode. 50 is a person who doesn't like to know who the producer is. He just likes to go in with the music. But Shah Money XL is going crazy for the tracks we sent. Singles, the album's intended lead single, Get Up was released for digital download on October 13, 2008, after earlier being released through 50 Cent's official internet community This is 50.com. The song features production from American record producer Scott Storch, and peaked at number 44 on the Billboard Hot 100. The music video was released to Vevo on June 16, 2009. The intended second promotional single, I Get It In, was released in early January 2009, with production credited to Dr. Dre. The song peaked at number 53 on the Billboard Hot 100. However, neither track appeared on the album, largely due to delays the album encountered. The album's eventual lead promotional single, OK, You're Right, was released for digital download on May 19, 2009, after originally being included on 50 Cent's seventh solo mixed up War Angel LP. The song features production from Dr. Dre, with co-production from Mark Batson. However, the song underperformed commercially, peaking at only number 20 on the bubbling under R&B hip-hop songs chart in America. The album's lead single, Baby By Me, was released for digital download on September 10, 2009. The song features American R&B singer Neo, and is produced by American record producer Pillow Dardon. The song peaked at number 28 on the Billboard Hot 100, and peaked in the upper regions of several national charts worldwide. The song features a sample from an earlier 50 Cent song, I Get Money. The album's second single, Do You Think About Me, was released for digital download on January 16, 2010. The song features uncredited vocals from R and B singer Governor, and is produced by record producer Rockwilder. However, the song was one of 50 Cent's least commercially successful singles to date, only peaking at number 7 on the bubbling under Hot 100 singles chart in America. During an interview with MTV, 50 Cent announced that the third single to be released will be Get It Hot. Shortly after this announcement, 50 Cent confirmed with MTV that a visual will be released for So Disrespectful. However this did not materialize. Commercial performance, the album sold 160,000 copies in its first week, 
debuting at number four in the United States. Due to the album leaking on October 28, nearly four weeks ahead of the original release date of November 23, the album was released exclusively to iTunes on November 9, and was physically released in stores on November 16, a week later. Due to this unique circumstance, 50 Cent's label Interscope requested that Billboard and Nielsen Sounds can delay charting the album for a week, so the first week digital sales were added to the total amount of albums sold between November 16 and 22. The album sold 46,000 copies during its iTunes exclusive week, meaning that 114,000 copies were sold between November 16 and 22. The album fell 15 spots to number 20 on the Billboard chart in its second week selling 66,000 copies. The album fell 20 spots to number 40 in its third week, with sales of 30,000. The album sold 23,000 units in its fourth week, falling to number 64 on the Billboard 200. The album sold 26,000 copies in its fifth week to land at number 67 on the chart, and continued to slowly increase in sales during the holiday season for its sixth week landing at number 61 on the Billboard charts with sales of 29,000. In the seventh week the album sold 15,000 copies to land at number 42 on the Billboard 200. Before I Self Destruct ended as the 111th best-selling album of 2009, with year-end sales of 350,000. Moving into 2010, Before I Self Destruct sold 8,800 in its eighth week, placing it at number 57. In its ninth week it sold 7,300 moving down to number 68. In its tenth week it sold 6,800 placing it at number 73 on the Billboard 200. In its eleventh week it sold 6,600 copies to land at number 89 on the Billboard 200. The album saw an increase in sales in its twelfth week with 8,500 copies sold, to land at number 73. It sold 8,100 copies in its 13th week to land at number 99 on the Billboard 200. In its 14th week the album sold 7,000 copies to land at number 87 in the Billboard 200 chart. In its 15th week the album sold 8,400 copies to land at number 64 on the Billboard 200 chart. In its 16th week the album sold 5,800 copies to land at number 106 on the Billboard 200 chart. In its 17th week the album sold 5,000 copies to land at number 129 on the Billboard 200 Albums Chart. In its 18th week the album sold 4,300 copies to land at number 132 on the Billboard 200 Chart. In its 19th week the album sold 3,700 copies to land at number 154 on the Billboard 200 Albums Chart. In its 20th week the album sold 3,600 copies to land at number 182 on the Billboard 200 Albums Chart. In its 21st week the album sold 2,500 copies, which was not enough to land in the Billboard Top 200 Albums Chart. However, it landed at number 188 in the Top 200 Current Albums Chart. This was the last week the album would chart on the Billboard 200 or Billboard Top Current Albums Chart. It was ranked 67th on the Billboard year-end for 2010. The album was certified gold by the RIAA in January 2010 for shipping 500,000 units. By January 2015, the album sold 1,359,340 copies in the United States. The album was certified platinum by the RIAA in January 2015 for shipping 1 million units. Critical Reception before I Self Destruct has received generally positive reviews from music critics. At Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating out of 100 to reviews from mainstream critics, the album received an average score of 62, based on 15 reviews. Olmasic called it a fantastic juggernaut of a 50 album if you exit early, and a very good one even if you don't. Entertainment Weekly wrote that growling violent threats over hard beats. 50 sounds the hungriest he has in years. Of course, theory a Euro unregistered trademark s nothing remotely original about the formula hey Euro unregistered trademark s returning to, but at least hey Euro unregistered trademark s going through the motions with gusto. The AV Club said that, if Destruct qualifies as a pleasant surprise, 
ET Euro unregistered trademark S only because 50 cent a Euro unregistered trademark S last few releases set the bar so low. Still, for the first time since the massacre, ET Euro unregistered trademark S once again intermittently fun to root for the bad guy Pitchfork Media wrote that, after initially promising a return to form, 50 doesn't have the ability or initiative to hold the listener's interest over the long run. Pop Matters said that, with surprisingly little filler, renewed energy, and the unique glimpse before I self-destruct offers into the psyche of a public figure as intriguing as Curtis Jackson, 50 Cent has crafted easily his best albums since Get Rich or Die Trying. In a mixed review, Rolling Stone magazine called it an album where got more guns than a gun store passes for word play a euro, but that's how 50 sticks to basics. Greg Cott of the Chicago Tribune wrote that, about halfway through the album, 50 Cent detours from the street to the bedroom. The New York Times wrote, Taken as a whole this album has a pleasingly morbid tone, in keeping with the best moments from 50 Cent a Euro unregistered trademark s first two albums. But context is this album a Euro unregistered trademark s undoing. Slant Magazine's Jesse Cataldo stated, Before I self-destruct plays as a prudent step back. The album possesses a sense of latent menace that's been left unexplored since his early mixed ups. Mark Hogan of Spin criticized 50 Cent's rapping on the album's first half and stated, The last several tracks shift to the club, sometimes smoothly, more often not. MSN Music's Robert Criscoll gave the album a dud rating, indicating a bad record whose details rarely merit further thought. Track listing, all song samples, Writing and production credits are according to the album booklet. Notes, track 14, featuring uncredited vocals by Governor. Sample credits, then days went by samples Ain't No Sunshine performed by Michael Jackson, originally by Bill Withers. Psycho samples The Age of Love performed by Age of Love. Crime Wave samples I Can't Believe You're Gone by the Barano Brothers, and This Is Family by Fabolous. Strong Enough Samples If I Were Your Woman by Gladys Knight and the Pips. Gangsters Delight Samples Rappers Delight by the Sue Gile Gang. I Got Swag Samples A Love That's Worth Having by Willie Hutch. Plug Tune In by De La Soul. Baby Buy Me Samples I Get Money by 50 Cent. Personnel. Charts. Release History. References. External Links. Before I Self-Destruct at Metacritic. Album review at about.com